Hey everyone, this is Evan with Kamloops Trout. You're watching our YouTube channel, and tonight we're going to be showing you some Tony Stark chronomids. A uh, pretty cool pattern I'd like to share with you all. So we'll get started right away, tying on this scud hook in the vise, and tying in our uh, white cotton yarn just to the underside of the hook for our gill material. And I don't normally tie my gills to the underside of the hook. Um, just occurred to me I'd never done it this way, so I thought, hey, why not? So just something to change it up once in a while. I like to do things differently from time to time. So anyway, um, we'll just be sliding forward. That uh, It's a high gloss black entice bead. Um, use a lot of black metallic beads, but uh, the high gloss is also a really nice color to to work with so and they, they do catch fish quite well so um, next are we're going to be tying in some UTC 70 in red and um, the next part of this fly is pretty much the most crucial part uh, you, could, you could do different uh, shades of thread but uh, I find this is really does the trick and it's uh, a midge flex scud back material I've trimmed to my desired width with a straight edge and a razor blade. And it is a Stillwater Solutions brand produced by Superfly. I don't think they're manufacturing anymore. Um, but any light brown should do the trick. And I've experimented quite a bit over the last couple of years trying to replicate the natural uh, as best I could. I've tried various threads and different wraps, you know, buzzer wrap and other things like that and I found that the midge flex scud back was a uh, was really worked quite well to get the effect that I was looking for so that's why I'm uh, finally releasing this one I think it is pretty neat pattern and hopefully it'll catch some fish too I haven't tried them out myself yet at this point so now we're tying in some fluorescent yellow thread and we're just gonna go back past halfway on this fly so if you go just past that hook point a little ways uh, past halfway of the full length of the hook or your fly I mean um, that's I've studied the images of the naturals in the photos I've taken and that's about where the the yellow segmentation kind of stops or ends so going just past halfway with that and third our color is going to be a fluorescent green and of course it's really nice to have multiple bobbins for a fly like this you don't want to be changing threads every time you want to put in your next color so uh, with the fluorescent green I'll go just past maybe half of the yellow and reason why I say that is you also gonna lose a little bit of the length of that color when you tie in your collar so and we'll just trim that off and follow through with our next final uh, thread which is UTC 70 rusty brown and just tie that in behind the bead and we'll follow through with our one of our final steps here which is wrapping forward with our midge flex so the key to this is kind of pulling really tight at the back few wraps and then letting off a little bit and uh, putting it on somewhat loose so that those segments really pop out uh, stick out and also so that they're not too transparent or translucent we don't want uh, too much of that color coming through if you pull it too tight you do lose quite a bit so we'll pull tight on that trim that out and finally um, you don't have to at this point it is kind of a pain to work with but it's fun to kind of make more natural patterns once in a while trying to imitate the chronomids as closely as we can so for this particular fly uh, in a bigger hook size I'm just gonna tie in some uh, amber goose by and so we'll just cut those the tips off of a few strands off the main stem and very carefully try and lay those down just underneath the underside of that hook and it is a little tricky uh, like I said, I don't think it's really going to catch more fish, but just a fun thing to do. 
So uh, we're going to lay those on and we don't really want the tips to go anywhere further than halfway down that fly because the, the wing casing generally doesn't go down too much further or any further than that. So we'll just get in with our scissors and cut those off as closely as possible and hopefully uh, you've laid those down not too bad you can always get in there and trim a few if they're sticking out you think a little too long afterward so finally last part of this fly and it is quite crucial I highly recommend not to use UV resin on the um, the really bright color portion the yellow and the green because it does darken up those uh, colors a little bit too much and you don't get the same effect uh, imitating the natural so I'll use a little bit of solar res just on the wing casing and the collar behind the bead and even on the red butt because it'll absorb in underneath that uh, midge flex and make a nice shiny bright red butt a nice glossy look and it, the solar res does cure up raw card makes for a nice solid fly but uh, last step I would uh, recommend just taking maybe some Sally Hansen's uh, Hard as Nails after uh, doing the UV and then just touching up the midsection that you missed with that because the Sally Hansen's doesn't quite um, color it up as badly. It does a little bit but not nearly as bad. So I hope you guys all like this fly. Um, it was kind of a pain putting this video together. I've tried a couple times and the first ones didn't work out so well. Um, anyway, so thanks for watching. Check us out on www.camloopstrout.net. And cheers, tight lines, and we'll see you at ice off. Thanks for watching.